You'll need to read Genesis chapters 1 through 3 to get the full context of this lesson, but I'm just going to read chapter 2, verse 7, and verses 15 through 17. The Bible says, Then the Lord God formed man of the dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat from it you will surely die. Why is it that so soon after giving Adam life, God is talking to him about his death. God had just formed him from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So why is God talking about his death? If you go back to chapter 1 and you read um, the first six days of the creation account, you see that when God looked at it, he said not only was it good, but especially after having created humanity, it was very good. So why is God talking to Adam about death? And why was death the consequence for disobedience? Why did God declare that humanity would die as a result of sin? And was that even a reasonable consequence for eating a piece of fruit? Doesn't that seem a bit extreme, a bit over the top? Death for eating a piece of fruit? Was God being reasonable? And it's an important question to answer because whether or not you think God was being reasonable will determine whether or not you want to get to know Him, whether or not you'll draw closer to Him, and whether you want to serve Him. So it's an important question to answer. And whenever I have a conversation with someone about whether or not, whether or not God was reasonable, uh, someone will usually wrestle with the question as to why did God place the tree there to begin with? Why did God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden? And the answer I hear over and over again, at least one person will say that God put the tree there as a test. That God was testing Adam and Eve when he put the tree there. Now, that's an option, but if the only thing you see is a test, then like Eve, you are in danger of disobeying God. Eve disobeyed God when she began to doubt his character. Because you see, the serpent had convinced Eve that God was being shady and that God was withholding something good from her. And when she began to doubt his character, when that uh, was called into question for her, that's when she disobeyed and she took of the fruit and she gave it to her husband who was with her. They ate and they disobeyed God. And if you see the presence of the tree in the garden as a test, then like Eve, you are doubting God's character. Because what does that say? It says God put the tree there as a test, and when they tripped over it and stumbled and fell, God punished them. And by no means is that reasonable. But there's a better question to ask if you're trying to understand whether or not you're dealing with a reasonable God. And that question is, why did God prohibit them from eating of the tree? Why did God say that they couldn't eat of that tree? And it's worth thinking about because it's the point on which the serpent distracted Eve. And also, to a certain extent, the serpent was right. When you read on into chapter 3, verse 5, the serpent told Eve, God knows that when you eat from that tree, your eyes are going to be opened and you're going to be like God and you're going to know good and evil. And so the serpent was right that they were going to be like God in that sense. But what the serpent didn't tell them was being like God is not the same as being God. Because you see, God can know good and evil and not be affected by it. God can be exposed to good and evil and it doesn't taint his character. It doesn't change his nature. But for Adam and Eve, when they came to know good and evil, it changed everything. It wrecked everything. 
first of all, it changed their perception of themselves. If you keep reading, it says their eyes were open and then they saw that they were naked and they were ashamed. And then it changed their relationship with God because when they heard him walking in the cool of the day, they hid from him. They cowered. They were afraid. It changed everything. But the serpent didn't tell them that. And so when God told them not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he was protecting them. Not only was he protecting their self-concept, but he was preserving the relationship that they had with him. Because in the beginning, there was no barrier between them. They were totally transparent with him. There was total and perfect intimacy. There was no need to hide, no need for shame. And God was pr trying to preserve that when he said, do not eat from that tree. And this was very reasonable. But I'll be honest with you, the first time I was studying this passage, even though I had concluded that God was uh, trying to preserve the relationship, I still didn't understand why they had to die. Why did God assign death as a consequence of their sin? And I remember I was just thinking about that over and over again. I was here in my living room sitting at my computer desk and I was just pondering this question, why did they have to die? I didn't understand. And I was uh, just silently praying to God and uh, I just told God, look, I don't, I don't understand this. I don't understand why you said they had to die, but I trust you. I trust you. And as soon as I said, I trust you, God did something that he's only done a handful of times in my life. He responded by putting words in my head. And God said, without death, there's no possibility of redemption. Once I got past uh, being startled that God had responded, I, I typed those words into my computer. Without death, there's no possibility of redemption. God was saying, if you don't die, I cannot redeem you. Unless you die, I cannot make things like they used to be. Death was the only way God could redeem us, humanity, from their decision to sin. It's like death was God's safety net. So back in 2013, you might remember that Nick Walinda walked across the Grand Canyon on a tightrope. And he did it without a safety net. And as you can imagine, if he had fallen, he wouldn't have made it. If he had fallen, he would not have recovered from that fall. And that's why trapeze artists use a safety net. Because they want to ensure that in the event of a fall, whatever injuries occur won't cause permanent damage. They want to be able to live through that. They want to survive it. And death was God's safety net. Because you see, God knew right from the outset, right from the beginning when he created humanity, he knew that humans might choose to disobey. So he ensured right from the beginning that he would be able to rescue us in the event of a fall. Death is the only way that God could redeem us from sin. So God declared that we would die so that we would live, so that we would live. And so that's why in chapter 3 and verse 22, uh, when you read, uh, the Lord God said, Oh my goodness, look at humanity. they become like us, knowing good and evil. So unless they stretch out their hand and take and eat from the tree of life. He removed them from the garden because if they had eaten from the tree of life, they would have permanently been in a state from which they could not recover. They would have permanently been in a state of sin. And so God was ensuring that he would be able to redeem them. So he cut off their access to the tree of life. And as you continue reading the Bible, you see God's plan for redemption unfold. Initially, Adam and Eve covered themselves with leaves, but then God took another step and he covered them with animal skins. So the, the first death was 
the death of the animals. But as you keep reading, you see the theme of redemption playing out and unfolding throughout scripture. And ultimately you find out that God gave of himself for the redemption of humanity and for all of creation. God gave of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus died so that we might live, so that we might have newness of life, so that God could make it like it was in the beginning. And I, I'd even say better than it was because the Bible talks about that we're going to have glorified bodies and the sin that affects us right now, it won't exist anymore. And, and there won't be anything that's going to be a hindrance between us and God. There's not going to be anything that's going to threaten that relationship. There will be there will be no barrier and God will never remove us from his presence and God will never remove his presence from us. And that's part of his plan that he talks about in his Bible. I want God to make me so that I don't sin anymore. I want God to make it so that there's nothing between he and I. And if you want that too, God will give it to you. If you believe that that's what he offers you, if you believe that through Jesus Christ, God makes that possible, then that is the gift that God offers you.